21st century Africa, a continent undergoing great change and finally seizing control of its image. But it's been a long battle. A hundred years ago, photography was a colonial tool. Prince George has had a royal welcome from the great Zulu nation. The time has come for the independent African state. In the post-colonial euphoria, photographers like Malik Sidibe captured the new confidence. But elsewhere, the narrative was of a corrupt, unmanageable continent, often reduced to just one image. Now, a new generation is using photography to celebrate, to question, and represent a continent on the rise. first female photographers in Kenya who started doing fashion and commercial photography. I really love fashion, I love art, and I especially love watching people. Then just turn and face that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Come, come forward. Forward, forward, forward. Put your arms on this thing. Yeah, cool. That's nice. Excellent. When I started out, one especially woman told me, you're black, you're female. There's no possible way you can be a professional photographer. You know what? This is what I want to do, and I'm going to do it anyway. You're doing this. Your lower body is going one way, your upper body is going the other way. Sometimes my coach tells me, stop hitting like a girl. And I'm like, but I'm a girl. But the fact of the matter is sometimes, even as girls, when you're growing up, you know, you want to run, you want to do all these things, but they hold you back. Yet for guys, they're just like, go out and play and, you know, do everything, you know, you can be. And it's very interesting because sometimes I have male assistants, so um, sometimes I can go in with my bag and people expect them to be the photographer, not me. Yeah? Or when they see me holding this camera, it's like, look at the camera, look at you, look at the camera, look at you, and you're just like, yeah, I'm a girl, I have a camera, so what? photographer and you're a woman, that's great. If you're a construction worker and you're a woman, that's great. If you're a boxer and a woman, that's great. Do what you want to do. I have a new project that involves one dress that's sort of a symbol of unity and national identity. Through this one dress, I get to shoot different women from all areas of Kenya. I feel that women are very courageous. However, some of the people who make the most impact in the grassroots, you don't see them and you don't get to hear them. And one thing that was important for me was for the women to stand out. <laughs> I did stress, I told the designer to just do a red dress and to make it big. The difficulty, as you know, was trying to get six sizes, six sizes. into one dress. Mm -hmm. Then we have these at the back. Mm -hmm. What happens if somebody has a bigger behind? Yeah. There's enough, there's like six inches of fabric inside which is tucked in. Patricia Bella, you are a genius of construction. <laughs> Almost it is. <laughs> I love this Kenta Kenya flag thing. 
and it makes it more Kenyan, I think. Thank you. <sighs> the women who are going to wear this, this will be so cool. It's good that the dress is going all over so everybody can wear it. This doesn't matter where you're from, which village, which tribe. Because Kenya tends to be a bit tribal sometimes. Yeah. So it's good when people from different areas can put on the dress. It's really important for me the stories the women tell through the wearing of this dress, the way we can communicate ideas, the way we can talk about themes and values and the whole idea of interacting with a wide range of Kenyan women that I've never met before. They say the time tells the tales of men, the clock ticks as I dwell within. Where the self begins, my school of thought start expelled the friends. Every suburb in Nairobi, like even the middle class, there's always a slum next to it. And this slum provides now the manpower for the middle class or the high class areas. Lily is a headmistress of an early education school. I admire her initiative and resilience. She saw the situation where kids couldn't afford the normal education. So she quit her job and started a small school. Just come close. Then the kids can come around. The school is in Kibera. It is serving children in the slum. It is the largest slum in Africa because it has about one million people. You know, you become so mad with the government yeah. when you see kids playing with dirty water, water sewer water, and then you're looking, you're remembering your child. In fact, I keep telling people that if I bring my Jeremy here, mm. one day, mm. the following day, I will be in Nairobi Hospital and he'll have pipes everywhere. Oh, yeah, They'll be it. testing. <laughs> but they have adapted a bit to the environment. Completely. This is a good student. Mm -hmm. Started Little Rock at two and a half years. How Which old class are you? are you now? Four. Class four. How old? Twelve. Yeah. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is this, she has issues. Yeah. The mother has left them, they are staying alone. Yeah. There's a sister uh -huh. who is now the house mother. Oh. She's the one who cooks for the other two. Yes. The mother discovered that she was positive two years ago, yeah. and it psh, it really demoralized her. Yeah. So those are the things these kids are facing down here. These kids believe that uh, the people on the other side uh -huh. have taken what belongs to them. Oh. Yes, and they are very bitter. They're very bitter about it. Very, very bitter. bitter. They say the other people have taken yeah, what belongs to, to us. Yeah. And the other people is the middle class, which is us. Yes. And then the girl child is most vulnerable. So those are the driving forces for me to work here and even for me to leave my well-paying job to come and volunteer is to see another woman's life improved. Mm. <laughs> I'm very privileged if I think about it that I had at least a father who had a camera and who took his time to take pictures of us when we were children. My father was the complete photo enthusiast. I used to love looking through my parents' photo albums. I still have it right now as a picture of um, the dowry negotiations for my mom and my dad's wedding. I have one picture and I was just like, I mean, it's blurry and stuff like that, but I always hold it in and I'm just like, look at this picture. And I like it. This was the first camera I ever shot with. And this was my father's camera. Whoa, it is. But I shot so much with this in the beginning. It's wonderful. It's one of those things I still keep with me and I still look at because it reminds me yeah, where I came from and what I did. Mommy, Daddy, are you there? 
Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, mommy, there you are. <laughs> I like to see the first. Daddy, what's African? Daddy, what's African? <coughs> How do I look? Oh, nice. Like a, a model. I've never been a model. Cool. Very nice. That is nice, Mommy. Well, beautifully. I love that, Mom. Women in Kenya, I can tell you, they want to wear European clothes. Daddy, what is African? <laughs> this people will say is European, even if it's African fabric. The shoes, the trousers. Any clothes has three functions to display, to cover your body, and to show some distinction who you are. Identity. You don't have a national dress. No, we don't have. And we will not have. So, and there's no one, by the way, we can blame. No, that. we can blame the British. The British said that this one is shanty. This hat is British. I like putting on <laughs> because because of the British. Yeah. yeah. I wish I had an African hat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's do this one. Good. Just turn slightly to the side, please, yeah. mommy. Okay, cool. That's nice. Daddy, wait, 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 I need to take one of you and mommy. Please one of you. That's it, yeah. Konami said television commentators have characterized her as a tough as nails, no-nonsense politician, drawing comparisons with Margaret Thatcher. Her name is Martha Karua. I'm running for president of Kenya. Generally, I admire Honorable Martha Karua because the whole issue of a woman being in politics is touching. A lot of people feel that a woman can't be in a position of leadership. As much as she's already visible in her own way, I wanted her to be one of the first women who put on the dress. The thing about the project is that it's a dress, and it's sort of like a national dress, but the, yeah, I'd like to shoot her. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's why we're on the campaign trail with her. What's going on with the Honorable Martha Karua now is she expressed doubts because a different political party other to hers had a color of predominantly red and she didn't want to be associated with that party by wearing the dress. The 
Honorable Martha Karua she still believes in the integrity of the project and she would like to be a part of it. They keep on pushing the date for it. However, I do believe that I'm going to shoot her in the dress. Next year, in 50 years, Kenya, Tango Independence. So it's like you're 50 years when I talk about this. She wants to see the dress because we'll be asking her if she can be part yeah. of it. Well, in a car, and it's a movie. She's doing a movie. She's doing a movie. She's doing a movie. Yes, that's good. When I get married, it's another life you're <laughs> under your husband. Like when you're single and you're staying at home, you're under your parents. So when you get married, you're under him. This project, just from the few women I have shot, seems to be taking a dimension on its own. She wanted to be a priest. She wanted to be a priest. It feels like a journey where you're on a road and you're in a car and you have no idea where you're going, but you're just going to trust in the process and you're going to go with it. And that's the ideal I have with life, that you never have a set opinion about something. I want one day to be like, someone who supplies tops for so many people. Yeah. That's my dream. And to make, and you know when you sell clothes, very nice clothes, you boost ladies' self-esteem because they look beautiful all the time. Yeah. <laughs> all these women have something special to them that really I'm privileged to be shooting. Oh my word, I love this. Beautiful at all. Very, very beautiful. I'm a performance and video artist. The performance is about trials and tribulations of contemporary Kenyan women. Lift your head up just slightly higher and look just even more into the horizon. Yeah, that's it, perfect. It's me putting on the mask that I need to leave my house. It's also equivalent to warrior paint that I tend to approach the world with, especially when I'm in Nairobi. I'm attempting to create a space that I'm safe in outside amongst men. I have memories of things happening in my bedroom from when I was three years old. The memories came out as repressed memories because it was so traumatic for me. Sexual abuse happens everywhere, but the thing is, in Africa, it's not actually being addressed by communities because there's still a lot of gender inequality. It's very important that we, as African women, actually have some kind of solidarity and, and help other women and other girls that are going through this. That is gorgeous. Very nice, Atul. I would like to see Kenyan women free, especially in the streets of Nairobi. I would love to be able to walk in the streets at night. I think that would be wonderful. The basic idea for the dress is that it's a communication vehicle where the women wear it, they're visible, and from that we get to hear their stories. And that's it's how- their microphone, kind yeah. of, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's, it's interesting the things you take for granted, but then now when you go to now different areas of the country and you shoot it and all these women are speaking, you're like, wow, we're different yet we're the same. Yeah, exactly. Who is, who is a Kenyan woman? We think we know, but I don't think anyone's ever really asked us. That is it. Nobody has asked yeah. us. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, wait, I'm 34 now. <laughs> oh. I hear that from now it's all downhill. We talk about money, relationships, kids. But anyway, not to depress you. <laughs>
you know, every time I go home now, ah, they might bring it up. They're like, yes, but we want grandchildren. We want a wedding. And I'm just like, oh, come off it. Though I might have been the first one to do stuff in the family, I'm just like, let's, let's chill. Sometimes, yes, you do get lonely and you want a partner, but I said I can't rush into a relationship for the wrong reasons. You know how sometimes you know this is going to end. Why am I going to start it in the first place? <laughs> it's like people don't know how to deal with people who are single. I'm like, yeah. yeah, it's an area of my life I don't want to talk about. How about you ask me about something I'm proud of? Yeah. Or when a man yeah. is successful, or oh, that's just him being, or when you're focusing on your career, you're like, mm, you, you get the from society. Do we call men independent? No. We just assume that they are? Yeah. But men are very needy. They're very needy. They're very dependent. Extremely needy. And I notice the older they grow, you're like... Especially for time and affection. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, she fell. Oh, she's so little. She's adorable. <laughs> oh, this is so exciting. I don't, I don't know how to say it. Like, you know, I'm just getting excited. Okay, um, I just got a call and um, it's sudden, but we have the opportunity to interview Martha and possibly shoot her in the dress in two hours. I like that sound. It's not what to wear. Oh my goodness. You know the funny thing was when I was putting the stuff in the car, I'd forgotten the dress and remembered the dress! The dress! I mean, you forget the dress. It would be so interesting if I got to the location and it would be like, yeah, you didn't carry the dress. <laughs> that would have been too funny. Good afternoon. afternoon. Thank you for seeing us at such short time. Yeah. Yeah, and for a very short time too. Yes. Yeah. So we'll make it as quick as possible? Yeah, I want to go okay. and do something before um, Excellent, excellent. So all we just need is you in the dress, and then we'll do a few questions very quick, but it shouldn't take more than 20 minutes. Why did you yeah. use a dress there for that is not cultural, if you like? <laughs> that is not African. That is because not we don't do a ball gown. We don't do a ball gown. If you had gotten this nice kitenge, mm -hmm. then we would understand about it. Yeah. Because it defines us. Yeah. What's important for me is it does have to have some symbol of the Kenyan identity. That's why we have the flag in it. However, it does have to be very visible. I believe you're a key Kenyan woman. And for me, it would be an honor if you wore this dress and also if we could have an interview with you in it and um, where you could articulate more of your views. OK, let's get on with it. Now, this looks like an English. I mean, no. that's the first thing my father said when he saw it, too. Yeah. I thought you were interviewing me. Oh, you will, mm -hmm. at the same time. Just turn slightly, your face just that way. Just look at her on that side. That's good. What do you feel are the qualities needed for a woman to be in a position of leadership? Yeah, for women, I feel they're particularly suited to leadership. Nurturing young lives. Nurturing fragile babies to adulthood, to the many men and women who rule the world. Women have special skills. Women have the determination, the resilience that it takes. And I therefore think that you just know what you want, go for it. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks. Thank you. Done. This year will be 50 years of independence for Kenya. It's the Jubilee year. And that's why it's important for me to have a minimum of 50 women so that I can have an exhibition. And I'm very excited about that. No, of course, there'll be people who will be like, mm, that is not the real Kenyan woman. Then you keep on wondering, so what's real, what's not? Yes, they're all Kenyan women in their all different arenas. It does inspire. It does. It does.